journeys in life follow different paths. A hard ascent to a peak is as valid a journey as a river meandering to meet the ocean. In the next few minutes, I shall share with you some of the journeys that my own life has taken. Sometimes, a hard ascent, long walks along plateaus, and yes, sometimes, descent also. But let me begin where all journeys start. Born to a typical middle-class Tamil family in this very city of Hyderabad, arts was to play a major part in my life. But arts as prescribed by my parents was music and not dance, actually. It was academics first, music came second, and dance a distant third. But dance was where my heart was. Those days, entertainment meant going out to watch music, dance, theater shows, or catching up on Sunday movies in front of the television with the entire family. Now, this event was of such importance that one member of the family would be positioned on the terrace, adjusting the antenna so as to better the viewing for those of us in the living room. And once in a blue moon, you would have a major actor like Amitabh Bachchan, Rajesh Khanna, or Dharmendra, who would play the lead role. Dharmendra. Now, he was special. His leading, leading lady would often be Hema Malini ji. Hema Malini, apart from being a mega star herself, also a classical Bharatanatyam dancer. She looked like a million bucks, and she still does, and made up for Dharamji's two left feet. I wanted to be Hema Malini. And my Dharmendra? Well, that was Jija, the little daughter of my domestic help, whom I would bribe 10 paisa to reenact these Bollywood numbers in my living room. What started like this eventually led on to more formal dance lessons. I won competitions and eventually secured the Ministry of Culture scholarship, which allowed me to pursue learning dance, despite it being third in the priority list for my parents. This goes to show that where there is passion, innate abilities will find a way. In Bharatanatyam, as in other classical arts, technique holds you in good stead all your life. This is not unlike, say, cricket. But what happens when you want to master technique? Well, then, you need three ingredients. Practice, practice, and more practice. This by itself is very off-putting to a lot of aspiring dancers because of the sheer repetitiveness and the boredom it induces. But for those that persist, the rewards are very rich. And I believe that it was this practice that allowed me to hone my skills to such a degree that I was able to use the medium and language of Bharatanatyam to communicate any story many, many years later in life. Life lesson, before you can soar, you need to be able to walk. Life at this stage took me to the United States, where I went to pursue an education and take on a career. I trained to be a neuroscientist and started to work in a large pharmaceutical company. What happens? when you're living in the United States, working full-time, what happens to passion? My parents were very pleased with me because I had become this neuroscientist and was well settled. But ye dil mange more. I tried as best to muster time to balance household chores, raising a child, working full-time, and dance. Dance could have 
easily disappeared from my life at this stage. Where there is passion, it finds a path and stays alive. Every year, I would make a long trip from San Francisco to Chennai to participate in the Margari Festival. The Margari Festival is a festival of music, dance. It is a coveted platform for all Bharatanatyam dancers to secure a slot. Multiple venues, multiple performances, lectures, demonstrations, all-day events, plethora of options for audiences to choose from. While some of the performances were well attended, most of them had no takers. To see just the front two rows of my performance filled up with audience members and blank rows after blank rows beyond that, put in these confused and negative thoughts in my mind. But I still believed that it was not what I said, but how I said it that determined the interest of audiences. Problem was, thousands of other dancers were saying the same thing. Well, then what is the solution? To it. Try to think of it from this perspective. What would happen if, say, the Telugu industry one year decided to make different films with different actors all saying the same story? So you have Ram Charan, NTR Jr., Mahesh Babu, Prabhas, Alu Arjuna, all of them in different films but every film has the same narrative or story. And you as the audience would have to do only one thing, which is judge them for how well they played their role. Now that would be a very long year, wouldn't it? Now repeat this 200 times. It was very hard for me to believe that an art form that I had dedicated my entire life to until then had received such a tepid response in the Mecca of Bharatanatyam, Chennai. It made no sense to me. But sometimes, to get the right answers, you have to ask the right questions. A sound batsman like Virat or Sachin, they use their technique to win matches for their team. I believe that the purpose of dance is to entertain audiences. So it eventually started to dawn on me that technique and dance grammar was not enough to hold the interest of audiences. I needed something more, a lot more. I needed a story that was compelling, riveting, that I could have audiences at the edge of their seat. India has its share of stories from mythology, from religion, that has been the basis of traditional Bharatanatyam for centuries. For the dramatic effect, you have the slaying of evil demons. For the romantic effect, you have Krishna and his coterie of gopikas. For valorous heroic stories, you have Lord Rama who instructs us on how to live life. Many of these stories are cautionary tales. Others extol gods and goddesses. And some others cast the hero as an evergreen lover. Based on the Ashtanaikas or the eight heroines in varying states of love, the prescription of the Natya Shastra, the text, is that the content of Bharatanatyam is divine in origin. So I believe that the only thing I could change is the technique itself. I couldn't change, I couldn't conceivably change the content. 
who died. Until Galileo asked the question, the world believed that the earth was flat. If the answers are not satisfactory, you need to keep asking the question, no matter what society thrusts on you. So, it became very evident to me that I had to change the content. I had to find a novel story, rework the choreography, and use the medium of Bharatanatyam to communicate it to my audiences. And this is what I did in my very first production called Soul Cages. Soul Cages was not a leaf from mythology or religion. It is a very deeply philosophical narrative about the balance of life and death. And on a cold January day in 2012, I presented it for the very first time in Kamani Auditorium in New Delhi. The reaction that I received from audiences was a far cry from that which I got in my traditional Bharatanatyam days. Impelled by the success of Soul Cages, I went on to recreate and produce several such works. They went on world tours, and these works, I call them dance theater, for lack of a better word. These dance theater productions had their share of naysayers. Anytime you attempt to change a traditional art form like Bharatanatyam, it is going to be unacceptable to several critics. But I believe that that which does not evolve dies. This change I'm talking about is not cosmetic change. This is not change to costume or wearing purple flowers instead of the traditional white jasmine or fusing Bharatanatyam with an existing Western form. The content had changed in the story, and therefore, the music had to follow suit. The music that was traditionally based in Karnatic ragas was now given the dimension of world music. The set, the lighting, the choreography, all of it had to be reworked to be able to connect to audience members from different nationalities across different age groups and different gender. When the idea is to innovate, half measures are not adequate. The composite package has to undergo a sea of change. The idea was not just to give Bharatanatyam a new avatar so that it is cast as a newly formed stage production. It was to evangelize Bharatanatyam, to take it to those that would ordinarily not watch a Bharatanatyam performance, to the uninitiated, to those perhaps who have even moved away from Bharatanatyam to Western forms and Bollywood. So herein was my next question. The limitations of stage performances were such that I could only take it to perhaps several thousand people in a year. This was because of the limitations of the auditorium and the rigors of touring itself. So in 2018, I moved to the short film OTT platform where I started producing Bharatanatyam-based dance films. OTT. Now, that has its own caveats. While in a matter of few seconds, I could gain a million viewers, in those very few seconds, I could lose an audience to the simple swipe of a finger if my content is not interesting enough. So herein, I had to benchmark myself against Indian Western cinema to be able to hold the interest of audiences. So you see, my life has followed some patterns. A path, a roadblock, an innovation that allowed me to circumvent the roadblock, 
and a journey that traversed me to a new path, only to find yet another roadblock. It seems to mimic life itself. And in the many takeaways that I've had, I leave you with three. One, no pain, no gain. If you wish to get mastery over any craft, you have to put in the hours. Two, mastery of craft alone is not going to be able to hold your audience interest for very long. For that, you need to innovate. Three, to be able to sustain your success, now that is a very long journey. We're not talking about fame on social media that is temporary. To be able to validate and get successful in the eyes of the toughest, truest critic, you yourself, you need to be the agent of change that you seek. Thank you.